Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're looking at id Software's recently released Rage 2, and seeing how it compares visually to its 2011 predecessor, Rage. Now, of course, just like our last comparison, we should theoretically expect Rage 2 to look and play better in just about every way. It's been nearly 8 years since the original Rage released, and even back then, the game wasn't received as well as other open world shooters at the time. However, for the sake of being thorough, we're going to break down everything, from the character models, environments, textures, lighting, sound, and a little bit of gameplay. Though I'll go into far more detail about all the changes made to the gameplay in my final review later on. Bear in mind that both titles are being run on the PC platform, with their settings pushed as high as possible at a native 1440p resolution. Though any motion blur effects have been disabled to provide better image clarity. Also, since the original Rage has a few problems regarding its default max frame rate and its texture streaming, I have made a few minor tweaks throughout the configuration files to help fix them, but these changes shouldn't affect what we're talking about today. Okay, so to kick this comparison off, let's first take a look at a few of the character models, starting with some of the random pedestrians that walk around the town of Wellspring. Right off the bat, we can see that there's been a major shift in the style of clothing between both games, with the characters in the original Wellspring appearing more like scavengers, with stitched together outfits and a more gritty, dirty appearance. But after the events of the original game, it appears the town of Wellspring has been thriving, and the residents are now wearing more futuristic looking outfits, including some goofy looking cone hats, big eyewear, and mohawks. But this is simply a cosmetic change in relation to the game's lore. As for the quality of the models themselves, it's clear that Rage 2's character models appear significantly more detailed, with more complex geometry and more complex facial models. A lot of Rage 1's characters look great, but up close you'll notice a lot of muddy textures in place of actual 3D model details. However, despite these obvious improvements to the pedestrians, I can't help but feel Rage 1's pedestrians have a little bit more personality to them. Their worn outfits and their static placement in the world make them feel like they genuinely are a part of Wellspring, as opposed to these new pedestrians that feel like they were just dropped into the world with simple AI pathing. But the biggest change is the difference in the art direction. The characters in the original Rage have a little bit more of a cartoon-like design to them, similar to id Software's previous games of the time, Prey and Quake 4. The design of Dr. Vasir is another great example. You can clearly see several visual enhancements to this character, making him appear far more realistic than he did in 2011, including improved facial animations, textures, and overall model complexity. Everything from his cap to the various harnesses and straps on his outfit appear more detailed, and even the little robot sidekick now reacts properly to the environmental lighting. There's been several other changes to the character due to the passage of time in the game's story, but those changes should be clear when you play the game yourself. Next, I wanted to take a brief look at one of the few weapons that is shared between both games, the Settler's Pistol. This pistol, which is currently only available to players who pre-ordered Rage 2, looks identical in its design, which makes it a perfect example of how the artistic style has shifted. Instead of the cartoon-like appearance in Rage 1, Rage 2's Settler's Pistol feels like it's actually a part of the environment, with softer edges and proper reflective properties. Again, it's hard to really say one looks better than the other, but I will say that this new design makes the finer details that were previously very clear a bit muddied, and harder to make out. Also, it's worth mentioning that the weapon appears worn and old in Rage 2, which is a nice touch considering Rage 2 takes place 30 years at the events of the first game. Next up, let's take a look at how the environment has changed. For the most part, Wellsprings appears roughly the same in both games, with its makeshift scrapyard structures creating a seemingly complex network of alleys and streets, along with the wastelander vendors and pedestrians going about their business. But Rage 2's Wellspring is much larger, with longer streets, more alleys, and a new courtyard area honoring the protagonist of the original game. But then there's the less obvious changes that I found to be pretty interesting, mainly the level of detail all throughout the city. Despite the game's age, Rage 1 seems to feature far more detail in its various metal panels, bolts, and rivets. It's surprising to see a game that's so much newer struggle to provide as much detail, Though it's worth mentioning that Wellspring and Rage 2 is now seamlessly integrated into the open world without any loading screens. Also, the fact that the city has thrived over the past 30 years helps to explain a lot of the bigger alterations, including the brighter interior lighting, the lack of broken pipes and leaks, and some of the newer neon signs and advertisements thrown around. Outside of Wellspring, the changes are even more apparent, as the narrow linear canyons of the original Rage have been replaced with a massive open world environment to explore. Rage 2's environment stretches far, with several new open world activities including races, enemy convoys to intercept, and plenty of enemy outposts to clear out. 
The original Rage features some optional side activities in its open world, but they were more narrow in focus, often tasking players with destroying a few cars or toppling enemy machine gun nests. Rage 1's environment also lacked variety, with all the two or three locations in the map appearing different only because of the different shades of dirt. Rage 2 mostly stays true to the game's theme, however, thanks to the efforts of the protagonist in the first game, Rage 2's environments are beginning to show signs of life, with plenty of bright, colorful green foliage growing alongside the roads, and even large swamp areas to explore. This increase in both environmental complexity and richer color palette gives Rage 2 a more interesting and varied appearance, and one that will likely appeal to a larger audience. And then of course there's the environmental textures, which unsurprisingly, appear crisper and more detailed in the most recent game. In fact, one of the biggest problems with the original Rage was the terrible texture streaming, with textures on the cliff sides and throughout towns taking way too long to load in, and morphing right in front of the player. You can always adjust some of the configuration files in Rage 1 to produce this problem, but it's still there when you first load into new areas, a problem that Rage 2 just doesn't suffer from. Next, we have lighting. Rage 2's lighting is much better than the lighting in the original game, while Rage 1 features some minor examples of volumetric light effects, it still feels noticeably static, especially considering there's no dynamic time of day. Rage 2, on the other hand, features a full day-night cycle, which I found can be manually adjusted using the built-in photo mode if you'd like. Rage 2 also features realistic bloom effects, god ray implementation, and realistic reflective properties, which all help to contribute to a more believable presentation. Rage 2's lighting does result in a softer appearance though, making the cruel wasteland appear less threatening than it did in the original. 2011's Rage had this strange hybrid of cell-shaded visuals mixed with the Quake 4 feel, and everything felt more dark and disturbing as a result. So again, while the lighting is clearly more advanced in Rage 2, it's possible players may appreciate the art direction of the classic title instead. Next, let's talk about shadows. Usually, games with static lighting effects have much better shadow effects than games with dynamic time of days, but because of that huge 8 year development gap, Rage 2 has a huge advantage here, with softer, more natural looking shadow effects, whereas the shadows in the original game just look like a mess. Neither game features shadows of the player, which is unfortunate, but the shadow effects all throughout the environments of Rage 2 are just much better without question. Now, let's look at a few special effects, starting with fire. This is where Avalanche Studios engine really starts to shine. One of the hallmark features of the Just Cause franchise as of late is the over-the-top explosions and destructive properties of the open world. Unfortunately, Rage 2 doesn't feature nearly as much to blow up throughout its environments, but the explosion effects from oil drums and vehicles being blown up still looks great. Rage 1's effects were pretty decent for the time, with streams of fire shooting off in multiple directions and some nice destructive properties to things like vehicles. But the new explosions are more complex, with large clouds of thick black smoke mixed with bright yellow, orange, and small amounts of blue flames to really help sell the effect. On top of the explosive effect, the base lighting is also temporarily adjusted, as an easy way to make it feel like the explosion is lighting up the nearby environment, though it doesn't actually have any dynamic light properties. It does, however, directly impact nearby physics-based objects, like debris, and of course, the enemy standing near them, which really helps to make the effect feel more impactful. Standing environmental fires have also been improved, going from simple unrealistic yellow flames to something that more resembles napalm, with more complex flame designs, more smoke, and some more orange coloration. Finally, let's listen to a few sound comparisons. Which game do you think has the better overall sound design?
And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. As expected, Rage 2 has improved a great deal when it comes to its graphical design. With the help of Avalanche Studios' Apex Engine, the environments of Rage 2 feel more believable, with more dynamic physics-based props, more impressive explosions, vastly improved character models, and a more seamless open-world environment. However, despite its age, Rage 1's artistic direction has given it a surprising edge. Environments seem to feature more detail thanks to the almost cel-shaded art style. The textures aren't nearly as sharp, but it still feels almost as if you're walking through someone's concept art, giving Rage 1 a very unique and interesting presentation. But what do you guys think? Do you think Rage 2's more advanced features look better, or do you prefer the old classic art style of the first Rage? Let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.